What's up? Dude, um, top left corner in the cabinet, do we put, um... This one? Yeah, up there. You put the thing in there for the fridge. I forgot to grab it. You get it? Yo! Oh, he got him! Probably gonna ice you. Alright, that already that already just happened, but we just ran it back. <laughs> <laughs> we, we, we missed it the first time. Action baby! Back, we're back. We already did one. We're doing another one. Because this weekend was insane. Some shit happened that we could not let go by without talking about it. Mm -mm. Everyone knew it was coming. But we got to see it happen anyway, and to see an absolute destruction like that was amazing. So, with that being said, props to the Tampa Bay Buccaneers <laughs> for taking out the defending Super Bowl champion, Philadelphia yeah. Eagles, and let's rip the jewel for Fitzmagic. One time. Oh, Liddy gang. Oh, yeah. So, with that being said, we did record on Thursday. And we're going to put that up after this. But we wanted to come back and chat again um, because there's some crazy shit going off with some shit that we've been talking about. Yep. Long story short, kill shot. Um, where do we begin? Friday, I was on Twitter like right when it dropped. As soon as I saw the album artwork, I was like, oh, fuck, dude. Here we go. I was out um, doing some errands and I was actually at the gas station when you uh, texted me and said, check your Twitter DMs. Did you listen to it right away? I, well, I was I was pump, in the middle of pumping the gas, so I checked it, and I was like, oh, shit. So I, like, hurried up and finished up pumping, got in my car, and just flew home so I could sit down and, like, really listen to it. Yeah, I, I listened to it about, I don't know, 300 times. Yeah, so that I, day. Hold on. I went back and listened to the MGK one a couple times, too, just to compare. As did I, and to be honest, I got to say, even though I liked Rap Devil, uh, post Kill Shot doesn't slap. Yeah. Doesn't really slap as hard anymore. Yeah, I agree. 100%. Kill Shot definitely took some of the steam out of uh, out of the Rap Devil yeah. diss track. When I when Rap Devil first came out, I listened to it. I was like, oh, I mean, the beat's nice. It's like, it's it's a decent diss track. Right. But then, Kill Shot, I, the, f the first time I listened to it, I think I was too excited. Yeah. So I kind of didn't really focus on what he was saying. So like once I, once I got through the first listen and I listened to it a second time, I was like, yeah, this... He killed him. Well, that's the thing about... Now, I'm going to say, I don't think that he, like, ethered his career. No. I don't think his career is going to end or anything. But what you have to keep in mind is that this beef is not really personal. It is with the Haley shit, but it's... It's a very... It's just a rap beef. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah, absolutely. MGK threw a whole song at him, and instead of letting it slide, which some people think he should have done... Which I disagree with, with where he's at right now. I do. I His do too, whole yeah. kamikaze um, mindset is firing back on everyone. Yeah. And he didn't need to respond to MGK at all. He really didn't. But I'm so glad he did. Because as a vintage Eminem fan, I never thought I would hear this MC, like Battle MC Slim Shady back like that. I know. And I'm so glad I got to hear it. So I want to give top shout out to MGK. For making this possible yeah and for unleashing yeah. the beast for bringing this out of them like it's so exciting and um generally speaking you can tell a majority uh feels like kill shot was exactly what it claims to be everybody who actually listened to it right and i'm not going to um argue with people who say that mgk had a better song um if you feel that way like maybe you think it's catchier or whatever that's fine i mean that's totally cool but <clears throat> If you, there's no way you can actually think it's a better diss. I mean, no. Eminem hit on every single bar of MGK's diss That's track. exactly. He took all, everything that he said and flipped it back he, on him. He responded to every single point of it. Um, he flipped his chorus on him at the end, which yep. was genius. He had that fucking nuke line about uh, P. Diddy and Tupac. Yeah. I mean, that's something that you throw in because that's a line that just will get everybody talking. Oh, yeah. And um, just a cerebral disassembling of MGK's character, um, basically making him look inferior. Like, you don't, you're not even on my level. And MGK, while he had some slick lines, it really was uh, juvenile in grade school-ish compared it was. to Killshot. Absolutely. And that's why I liked at the beginning Eminem 
mocked the whole thing. That and really put the nail in the coffin for me. When I heard yeah. him saying, beard is weird, fucking weird beard, yelling at the mic. When yeah. I heard, like, because he basically just clowned his track. Yeah, he basically he said, you're corny. You suck. Like, yeah. you can't rap on my level at all. And like, he, to run, it's, it's weird because on Instagram, Eminem did this story a couple weeks ago, and it was like, it was a three-parter with Royce and uh, Mr. Things, Porter. Things not like, to things rhyme. Things not to rhyme. Yeah, exactly. I saw that. It was so funny. And then MGK's opening stanza is the fucking beard is weird. Mm -hmm. That's for me. That's gonna live on in infamy. Yeah. When I think of MGK now, I'm gonna think of the beard is weird. A lot of people have tried to argue too because in um, uh, Eminem song "Business" from the Eminem show, yeah. There's that line where he says, until we grow beards, get weird, and disappear into the mountains or something like that. Right, so he actually it, rhymed beard with disappear and threw in another right. rhyming word with it. But, but people were trying to say that that's where MGK's line came from. I mean, it could no. have, but I don't think it was because everybody's been shit-talking M's beard for... Yeah, it's because the beard is a new thing. It's, right. rele it's relevant. It has nothing to do with... I don't think he was that clever with that line. I Maybe. Think it was if just... he was, then I'm going to give the line slightly more respect, but even if that is why... It doesn't weigh out the corniness of it, and, the, no. and very few people are going to get that anyway. Yeah. And Emma also says in Kill Shot, he says something about, let's see who can out-petty who. Right. So, he, like, that whole first part of the song, and I watched a bunch of reactions on YouTube, too, and a lot of people, like, at the very beginning, they're like, okay, he's just playing with them. He's, he's just, you know, doing childish insults just like MGK did. Right, and then he fucking turned the volume up. Completely. Oh yeah, it, it gets more intense. Yeah, as the song goes on, the beat is fire. I don't know who yeah. made that, but that is like a funeral esque, yeah, savage beat. And his dude, the way he flows on the beat is insane. Once really he really is. gets going, he he does some crazy shit on that. It's a fantastic song. Mm -hmm. I mean, we're so blessed right now as Eminem fans. Yeah, for this era, um, it's just insane. Um, and you know, like I said, MGK. It is as big as you're going to ever get. True. This is awesome for you as a fan to get to go one-on-one -on -one with the great ones, so to speak. Yeah. Um, and he's putting out an EP on the 21st. Genius. Yep. That's the right thing to do, 100%. And uh, Right now, we'll all eyes are on him. Just the rollout of this album, you know, between the surprise, um, surprise drop, the single, or the videos that have been made, um, the press it's getting from like the Joe Budden pod, like mm -hmm. every Charlemagne, um, the interviews with Sway. Now this, the drum, the diss drum, like this yeah. is really a masterclass on how to shake up the industry in 2018. Eminem did what people thought he couldn't do anymore. And that's like he says in Kill Shot, the game's mine again. Only thing that changes the locks. Different way to get in the door now. Yep. But he's more than capable at 45 years old of just running shit. Here's a and, t here's a testament to how genius he is too. The he dropped part three the day before he dropped the diss, and in yeah, part three he, he says, says, "Yeah, I don't know if I'm gonna respond to him. Like, I don't know if it's worth it." And then the next day, bam, drops the track. Right, which made us all think like, "Oh, it's not coming." And then out of the blue, boom, kill shot. The album yep. art was perfect. And not Funny only that, hell. he he played everybody. Played everyone. He played everybody. Now, like you just said, Budden, Charlemagne, all them, they can't stop talking about it. No, it's and just they, it's just <clears throat> Eminem hour, dude. It's yeah. just the Eminem show is back in full force. The people who hate him the most, now it's all they can talk about. He really snapped, bruh. He did. And I want to say, too, another big move on his behalf, not making a video. Yeah. Just audio drop. That's a lot so of people... So as petty as you can say it is, and oh, he shouldn't have even responded. He dropped an audio track, and it's got 55 million views on YouTube in two days. It just had, audio. It had... 29 million in seven hours or something like that insane dude mgk's just hit 80 million it's been out for like over a week now. and you know that everyone who listens to kill shot is then playing rap devil so right like we said this is this is helping mgk i mean he's smart but at the same time he really sacrificed any chance to ever be in m's graces which if he doesn't give a fuck about that that's fine but when you see the instagram photo of g easy and they're giving the finger saying let's <laughs> yeah. talk about it as an eminem fan uh, and a guy in rap, I, you'd much rather be on that side of it. Absolutely. I mean, yeah, MGK is going to be hot for a little while, but is it going to be worth it in the end? I don't know. <clears throat> Imagine being MGK and beefing with G-Eazy, and then the Eminem beef <laughs> finally kicks off, and then you see G-Eazy, the guy you hate, hanging out with the guy that you used to love. Yeah, that's a tough one, man. That's got to hurt. That's what I mean. I'm not even going to, like, I really genuinely don't feel like MGK took an L. Yes, he got roasted badly, and mm -hmm. Eminem killed him in Kill Shot. Yeah. But MGK has got mad press. He went one-on-one -on -one with the GOAT. 
in our opinion, obviously. Yep. And holy fuck, man, what a time to be alive right now. See, Shit is litty. And we talked about it on the first one, too. Like, we said if Eminem comes back, it's not going to be career ending because no. we're, we're in a different time now. Right. That's and, not a thing anymore. Like, And Eminem said it like 10 different times that when I address him, it's just going to blow him up. Like, he knew that addressing him and dissing him, it wasn't going to kill him. It was going to make him bigger. You know, in the back of M's mind, like, he's doing him a favor because he respects that he did fire back with a track. Oh, yeah, absolutely. He even says, I'll give you a B for the effort. Yeah. You really stepped up. And you got to give MGK credit because nobody else did that. No. Eminem came at a lot of people. No one else. Dude, to put out a track by Monday <clears throat> when the album dropped on Friday, whether he had it in the bag or not, just the balls to do that, I respect it, dude. And yeah. I'm going to give him props. And as a true Shady fan that he is, he unleashed Shady. Yeah. Which is what we all want as fans of Eminem. So Absolutely. Holy fuck, man. What a time. I mean, just <clears throat> insane. Have you seen some of the uh, conspiracy theories that people have had about it so far? No, but I did see that Kill Shot is a movie where a very experienced hitman is trying to take out someone named Carmen Coulson. Oh, Coulson really? Coulson is Machine Gun Kelly's name. Genius. And he also... Eight-dimensional chess, bro. Yeah. And then the, the Swayze line. And he dropped it on the day Sw Patrick Swayze died. Wow. Ghost like Swayze. Yep. That's like a classic <clears throat> line, too. It's kind of honestly a played out line. But it was still dope. But yeah, a lot of people were saying that uh, this was kind of Eminem just like... He's basically... Like if he was fishing, he's just casting out bait. Right. And just seeing seeing what's going to happen next. If, if MGK does respond again, that's when Eminem is going to be like, all right, it's time to fucking... It's time to really end this guy. See, I don't know. I, I feel like after Kill Shot, I don't, first of all, I don't think there's anything MGK can say that would carry any weight. No, he's got nothing left at this point. And I think Eminem should be done with him at this point. Yeah. I think he said enough. He Let gave, MGK go off now, but it's, yeah. it's over. He gave him his window and he, he took him apart. And he gave, him, he gave him the diss that he deserved. Right. For the level that he was at. And speaking of our boy, but well, not speaking of because we didn't say it yet, but let me bring up our boy Buttons. <laughs> Buttons wants a personalized track from M in the worst way. Yeah. He wants it so bad. That's why he's doing it the way he's doing it. He yeah. knows he could go in the studio and put down bars. Yeah. But he wants M to hit him with the Joe Button in the scope. Right. In the laser sight. That's what Joe Budden wants. Because and he's, he's not going to get it from him. It's not going to happen. He Budden. wants he wants him to pay attention to him. He wants the one-on-one, -on -one, dude. He wants the, the pub from that, and it's yeah. not going to happen. When you sent me the, the edited clip of that what so Budden's response. Yeah. But I, like, I watched the clips of the interview, and like I didn't really, I don't know, I guess I didn't really catch it at first, but when I watched that, like that dude is... It's hurt. crazy. He's hurt. And it he's... sucks. I feel bad for him, like you even said. I kind of feel bad for him, but he brought it on himself. He did. He said it best. But when you see how emotional he is and like how hurt he is by Eminem dissing him, but it's like, dude, you shit on him first. Like, you can't expect the guy not to say something back. And Facts. <clears throat> to everybody saying that, oh, Eminem shouldn't be going at it with guys 20 years younger than him. It's like, dude, if somebody was just throwing shots at you and saying stuff about your daughter like whatever age you were you're going to be like all right fuck i've had enough i mean we might as well talk about it but wade obviously compared this to jay-z right off the bat which he does I yeah i really know why but and it's true jay-z would never respond to something like this he plays shit way cooler than that and that's his vibe that's what he does yeah eminem is a battle mc at heart mm -hmm. he loves the sport of rap jay-z is not a battle rapper no. never was He's a hustler yep. turned fucking hip hop icon. Yeah. Uh, Eminem is just not going to take the disrespect. I said it on Twitter, but he battled with Everlast. He battled with Benzino, Cannabis, um, DJ Lethal. These guys are not huge names. <clears throat> These guys are not guys that should have been on M's radar. And if no, he was like only... Jay-Z, he would have been like, oh, fuck him. I don't give a fuck. But Eminem is, loves the sport of rap and loves going at people's necks. And, and yeah. he said this in the interview. He's just showing that he's not going to be a punching bag. I don't care right. how old I am. I'm not going to let you motherfuckers just beat me up. Especially because I would like for anybody out there that's listening to this that may disagree with what we're saying, name one rapper ever that's ever been hated as much as him, that's ever taken as much shit from people as he has. That's name one. Thing. Even when he bursts onto the scene, dude, he's always had, he's always had critics. Even, the music industry has always been against him. Yeah. He's always had critics. He's always had people boycotting his music, petitioning his music. 
All that shit. So yeah. this is nothing new, dude. I, and I like that Eminem is no longer a champion of the music industry. I like how he went against the Grammys. He's no longer like part of it. He's like a rogue fucking rebel on the on the underground just doing his own shit yeah. and calling everybody and everything out for how bullshit it is it's just <clears throat> awesome it's such a cool time to be alive as an Eminem fan because i didn't know if it was ever going to be this exciting i know to be a shady fan <clears throat> again and, and this is just out of control dude it's out of control yeah. and like we've talked about before like you can say that he got a lot of what he got because he was white that's fine album sales and stuff like that but it's a factor but if you can sit there and say that he's never been hated on before like go back and listen to his old songs where he talks about how the media relentlessly yeah, nobody went after say, him no one could ever say that he's never been hated on he's he's gone through so much he's shit. got the most hate out of any rapper ever no right. one's ever been hated on at the level that he was so if if that's the case like as a human being you're gonna reach a breaking point and right. you're gonna be like all right i'm i'm done like i'm it's time for me to reciprocate i'm so glad it happened i yeah. love this Eminem. i said this as well but i don't regret any of the albums he's put out, any of the songs he's put out, any of the collabs, any of the freestyles, because it all led to this point. Mm -hmm. It all led to Kamikaze and this diss track and Eminem being on fucking fire right now and just tearing shit up. And mm -hmm. I, for one, am super fucking stoked about it. Yeah. If you guys don't agree, that's cool. Um, you know, but honestly, you know, it happens, dude. I've seen, I've seen. Uh, people say that Pacquiao beat Mayweather. Like people sometimes are just wrong. I mean, you're allowed to have your opinion, but. I'm allowed to say that it's fucking full of shit, too. So, like, yeah. if you think he won or whatever, I mean, I hope you mean as far as getting exposure because it is a win-win for MGK, as it's been no. said several times. But I've seen people, you know, say some crazy shit. So you can think what you want about it. But I think as a rap fan, if you really love rap and you love drama, too, and you love beef and everything that comes with it, you got to be pretty excited about this because it's pretty yeah. fucking sick. And if you, if you could say that mgk had the better disc like we said earlier you can i could understand them saying he had the better song yeah, if you like a song better that's your prerogative but if you say that he had the better disc then what i'm guessing is you sat down you put m's track on you heard the first 30 seconds where he was just playing around being the the jokester eminem like he does sometimes and you're like ah oh, this is trash and you right. turned it off or you did listen to it all the way through but you weren't actually focusing and trying to think about what he was saying because here's the thing with eminem Every bar that he has has at least three different meanings. Yeah, he has many layers, <clears throat> many double, triple entendres. Yeah. He's really reached a point on, on a certain level where he's become too good for his own good yeah. because he automatically like casts off like probably 50% of people in the world because they don't have they're not going to be able to process or appreciate what he's actually doing. No, so like definitely he, not. his flow like it's just it is what it is. And I know people will say that that's corny to say because it's like putting him on a pedestal, but he deserves to be on a fucking pedestal, dude. The shit that he says um, is just is just crazy. And I'm sorry, but there's no other rapper that has two diamond albums. Right. And no. facts. A lot of people try to say like, oh, like we talked about before too. Like, oh, he doesn't even say anything. He just rhymes words. Well, I'm sorry, but what does what does Future say in his songs? What does Migos say? Do they do they actually say anything? No, it, but it you bump that shit 24-7. But Eminem, who actually has bars that are like, when you think about him, you're like, holy shit, that's, that's genius. What it comes down to for me is I don't want Eminem to be like the top of the pop culture ladder anymore. It's 2018. It's time to pass the buck. 100%. Like, Migos yeah. and all them, they can rule shit for now. I'm not worried about that. But the fact that Eminem is still in the game killing it mm -hmm. and being the best rapper, maybe, he does, maybe like he's not going to be the hottest rapper, but... For as a fan to have the longevity of that, it's been almost twenty years of Eminem at the top, and so many people do not last that long. If you look at the rap game back when he started, none of those people are around anymore. No, they've all fallen off, and Eminem is still fucking killing it. So the only one still consistently making music is, well, actually no, because they weren't. They came way after him. So yeah, there's really not anybody from no. then. Not a single person. So kill shot. Got him. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was it was sick. I'm glad it happened. I'm thankful it happened. Basically, what we did was once Kill Shot happened, we were like, "Yo, we need to switch the day that we record, and we also need to get back in and do a an addition to the podcast." Yeah, because the whole Eminem was the whole reason we started this. And right. It, like I said, it seems like he likes to drop shit on Fridays. Yeah. So doing it on Thursdays is pointless because 
then we got to wait till the next week to even right. talk about it. And so. then if, if, if I upload on Monday, which is my goal, then it's literally less than a day old. We're talking about current shit. Right. So that's the goal. We're going to record on Saturday or Sunday. Um, let us know what you thought about Killshot or MGK. If you thought MGK won, I'd love for one of you to try to explain why. I mean, let me know. I am really, I really would like to know if someone really feels that way, because I can't fathom it. But if you really feel that way, tell me why. I want to know. I mean, I could tell you why. They just don't like Eminem. All right. Yeah, that works. That that's sense. why. <laughs> they, they, they don't, they don't want to accept the fact that Eminem They already have him taking an L no matter what. Right. If you, biased. if you go into the song not liking him, you're going to automatically yeah. think the other guy was better. That's the only reason. True. So... Anything else we want to cover on this little short? I mean, I think that pretty much wraps up. Is there anything else we got to say about it? Um, all of your favorite rappers think Eminem's the best. That's true, too. So, Also factual. So hopefully um, next time we record, I mean, maybe something else happens with this Eminem saga. And yeah, we might be back tomorrow. Who maybe, knows? Yeah, we might have to pull up again. I'll call you like before work, 6 a.m. Yeah. Before we record. <laughs> but... Uh, yeah, I mean, here comes the the actual episode. You you listened to it. You said it was it was tight. I liked it. I thought it was. I personally thought it was better than the first one. Just well, hopefully, because. you feel the same way. So that's the Twin Snakes podcast, which I forgot to announce. Um, probably shouldn't do that again. Got to try and brand this shit. Yeah. Thanks for tuning in and enjoy the episode. It's every week, bro. Mm-hmm. Let's go. These lines is. I don't know what's real and what's not at this point. I'm telling you that. If I ever need a ghostwriter, I need to just fucking put the mic down. What do you think? Facts. Action! Action Jackson. We're back. No intro again. Yeah. A little we'll, weird. We'll come up with something. Kind of weird starting out cold. It is a nowhere. little bit, yeah. You know, how I, like, I was talking normal, and then I went into my voice that I do yeah. for the show. Right as we started off. Yeah, it'll be better once we get an intro. So, welcome back. Uh, we don't have an intro, we don't have a song, but... Episode have, 2. Episode 2, we have a name. Can't believe we've been going this long. I know, the haters said it wouldn't be possible. I know, they said we wouldn't make it this far. <laughs> they, said we, we would, they said we wouldn't be able to rise and grind two weeks in a row. Nope. What's the name of the show, Cars? Twin Snakes Podcast. The Twin Snakes Podcast. Solid and liquid. That's sick. And if you don't know what that means, I mean, it's pretty self-explanatory. We're brothers, obviously. Yep. And I feel like, just like in Metal Gear Solid with Solid Snake and Liquid Snake, they kind of look the same, but they had the exact opposite genetic features. Yeah. And I feel like that might be me. Yeah, one's one's blonde and one's Yeah, one's like fair skin and blonde. So, plus like we're snakes because we talk shit. Yep. And it could be like metaphorically like two dicks. Yeah. Just two dudes being dicks. So it works. We're going to go with that and we're going to see how that goes. Um, so last week, put the shit up. Um, did you get any kind of response? Uh, I mean, was, my roommate Marcus liked it a lot. And like I said, he liked and subscribed for it. DeFabio liked it. Big shout out to DeFabio, bro. Yep. My man, that dude's funny. Yeah. I've never met him, obviously. No, but he's hilarious. Me, him, and Josh Bosley used to hang out all the time and go to the mall and shit. He's so funny. Just for, like, supporting the grind. Yeah. Got to give props out to my grind time savage. And we inspired him to listen to the Eminem album, and he liked it. True. So That's awesome. I, it was kind of cool how we did that. We, I feel like we kind of, we, we like, stood up for it locally. Yeah. Like, we, 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 we were willing to die on the cross. And we sold it. We sold it big. Yeah. Um, I hope so, you checked it out. A little update on that. Um, number one on the billboards, obviously. Yep. No surprises there. Yep. Um, you know that whole thing is going. On. We'll touch on Eminem a little bit here in in a in a short while. Um, shit, where do we begin now? This is kind of weird because we we did one and that was kind of like whatever. But once you do the first thing, then all of a sudden you're following something up, and yeah. it's like now almost feel like we have to do something to like be kind of like what we already did and well plus it's hard too because the first time it was um you know we were pumped up because of the album oh yeah and we now were, this we we're jacked like we didn't have to think about what we we're going to talk about it right, was kind of going to be that we kind of so. blew our load like yeah. the, whole, the whole thing really was like we really were like yo i want to talk about this m&m shit so bad let's start up a podcast again right that's pretty much all it was <laughs> and then now since we did it we're just gonna take it from there um I wasn't expecting anything crazy, but everyone who did listen to it, 
um, who reached out, said it was tight. Yeah, what kind of feedback did you get? Uh, yeah. Basically, you know, a few people hit me up, said it was funny. There's a few people that, like, I asked to listen to it just for feedback. Right. Um, but, uh, you know, there was, for instance, I'll give an example. Daniel Garcia, a local um, pro wrestler who I'm friends with, um, he listened to the whole thing. He messaged me and was like, yo, that shit was mad entertaining. Like, it was awesome. I love it. All right, cool. I want to have him on at some point because he's got a really cool story. So shout out to you there, Mr. Garcia. Red Death, as they call you. Um, Is that his name? That's his nickname. Nice. He's cool, man. He's that's dope. pretty fucking scary. Yeah, he's mad good. He's mad good. Props. Props to the boy. Um, so uh, this, is a, this is a little odd because this is obviously, this is a week old now. By the time we post it, it'll be even older. But like, rest in peace, Mac Miller. Yeah. Obviously. Goes without saying. Um, it's just sad, man. It is fucking sad because he's younger than me, and he's like, know. you know, like we can all relate to. Obviously, he had his fucking problems, substance abuse problems, and whatnot. Yeah, and it's just this is something I mentioned on on Twitter a little bit, but like, I feel like if he only had an idea of how much people liked him and how much right. people fucked with him, like, because once he died. The natural reaction, and it's what you should do because it's respectful and it's the right thing to do as a human being is just pour out support. Plus, when somebody dies, it like, even if you weren't that close to that person, like, it still hits you. It's it like, makes holy you think, shit, like, like whoa, damn. Like, right. And it's just a less, like, it's a lesson that we learn time and time again when people fucking die, unfortunately, is just, it can all end so soon. Yeah. You know what I mean? And I think, didn't he just put out a new album? I'm pretty sure. He did, yeah, back in August. And so I don't know what happened. That obviously there's his relationship issues and and whatnot. Who knows how, what that was like dealing with it? But. That's one thing I want to talk about actually, because a lot of people were trying to like throw Ariana Grande in there and say that it was her fault and stuff. Because like obviously they were together for however many years, and then they kind of she broke it off with them, I think, and then went in with Pete Davidson. Now they're getting right. married and everything. But like, it's not her fault. Like, no, I mean, that's if, absurd. If the relationship wasn't working out, it wasn't working out, and she wanted to split up. Like, you can't blame her for that. Like, I'm sure that had something to do with it on his end. Yeah, probably. But, I mean, that's a major emotional thing. He obviously was in love with her or whatever. It probably sucked dick. Yeah. I mean, who wants to see that? Nobody wants to see your ex move on that fast. And right. Be all ha- and plus, like, it's in the public eye. And yeah. That, mag- that magnifies it. And, um, which is weird too. That relationship really did kind of blow up. Like everybody was talking about it once like it a happened. Meme, dude. Yeah. That whole relationship was like a meme. I know. But yeah, I mean, I, I, this isn't even worth saying. I don't even know why I'm going to say it, but like, I didn't really listen to Mac Miller, but yeah. regardless of that, I mean, it's just fucking sad when someone dies that young and especially someone who has such an influence on like young people and I don't know, man, it's just, I, I, I don't get the sense that he even wanted to die. You know. See, that's that's the thing. Though. We'll never know. I mean, well, if you, um, obviously, back to the Ariana Grande thing too. Like uh-huh. he, like you just said, like he had, he had issues with drugs in the past. Like he was addicted to lean, which we already know killed Fredo Santana. Yeah, and a whole mess of other rappers. It's all bad. And probably had some pill addictions and stuff like that. But besides that, I listened to his song "Self Care," mm-hmm. which is off the new album, and. Number one in the video, he's in a coffin, like in a wooden coffin. Oh, that shit! Oh, that he carves memento mori into the top of it. Wow! Which means be mindful of death. And then in the song, there's a lyric that he says, "Like September, I fall," and he died in September. That's fucked up. Yeah. So I don't know. I mean, maybe it could have been a right. suicide, or maybe he was just super depressed and like, you know, maybe he decided he was messing to- with that imagery. Like he might have been thinking of suicide. That's one thing. Like. When any artist dies and they talked about death or drug addiction in their songs, yeah. you can go back and comb through and be like, oh, man, we should have seen this coming. Right, because, yeah. You know, at the same time, like, we don't know. You can't take art literally either. No. Like, if someone's in a coffin, it's not time to, like, have an intervention. Like, you know, he's making, it's an artistic choice. Yeah, so. and the song was called Self-Care, and, like, some of the lyrics were, like, Save Me For Myself. It was, like, obviously a song about depression and things like that. Right. And, like, mental health issues, but... um I don't know. It's just weird. It's, I think personally, I think it was just one of those situations where he was depressed. He was using drugs, self medicating. He just he just went a little too far one night and just took a little too much, and it yeah. unfortunately ended that way. It fucking sucks, bro. Mm-hmm. I think there's one thing that you know, like positive to come out of it. Hopefully, people stop fucking around with like drugs so heavily. I know. Like how many young 
artists are gonna have to die. Dude, you before. know that um, you know that guy Boom Gang? No, I don't know him. He he started out on Instagram or Twitter, I think, and he just does crazy shit. Like, um, there was one video where he went into McDonald's after he got a certain amount of subscribers and like got two ice creams and just basically jumped up on the counter in his boxers and like rubbed them all over himself and like slit. He's he's just crazy. He just does crazy shit and like he he'll go into a barber shop, get a haircut. And then he'll be like, oh, okay, so you said 20 bucks, right? And then he'll just take off and run out the door. Stuff like that. But he, right, pranks and shit. He was on the No Jumper podcast a few weeks ago, and he literally passed out on the podcast. And then come to find out this dude's taking like five Zanny bars a day. That's just shameful, dude. Yeah. Like it's just he, shameful. He's like going to die. You're going to die. Like, you are going to die soon. Yeah. You clearly take it way too far. Yeah. And it's just weird because we do... Not we personally, but just as a culture, like we do glorify absolutely drug use, especially for artists. Absolutely, it's like part of being cool. It's like getting fucked up. It always has been. It probably yeah. always will be. I mean, if just in rap, like even before people were bragging about the hard stuff, like even just weed, like rap has always talked about smoking weed and right. like made it sound cool. And like that's probably ninety percent of the reason a lot of people start smoking is because their favorite artist talks about it all the time. Facts. Yeah. And and also while we're on the subject, <laughs> I'm pretty sure that I got addicted to nicotine in the past week. Probably. I mean that thing's got fifty nick. The jewel is sick though. <laughs> the jewel is sick. I, I I hate cigarettes. You smoke cigs. I do. Yeah. So you like you're you're a nick boy. Yeah. But there's something about just ripping a flash drive and blowing that fatty no, ghost. No, dude. The the yeah. It the just, jewel. It tastes good. Like it's just. Oh. The Jewel, I've tried like probably five different types of vapes, and the Jewel is my favorite by far. It's it's Liddy City. And it's not like, I don't like those ones where like, number one, the, if you got to put the juice in yourself, it's super fucking messy. Yeah, who wants to do that bullshit? And it, it leaks into your mouth all the time, and it's hot, it fucking burns, and it's it tastes pop. like shit. Yeah, it's that's the thing. It's so easy to use. Like, it hits nice every time. You don't even have to turn it on. Yeah. And it's like, for me, being a cigarette smoker, like the Jewel was, like how it felt when I hit it was the closest thing to a puff off a cigarette. Like the way it would hit my lungs. Right. I really, I don't even smoke cigs ever, and I really was just hitting it to be funny, and then all of a sudden, I was like hitting it nonstop, yeah. and I was like all, light, all lightheaded, all fucked up off the yeah. nick, dude. Yeah. The nick got me tweaking. Yeah. So I needed to chill on that, actually. Yeah, you've been watching too much Maddie fucking smokes. Way too much <laughs> Maddie fucking smokes. <laughs> Vape life, dog. It's what it is. Um, what I wanted to ask you this, and I, I probably should have given you a pre-warning about this, because okay. it's kind of like a bit. <laughs> so it okay. would have been nice to give you the 411 so that you could prepare something. What was the best example of clout chasing that you saw all week? What was what was the big clout chase of the week for you? You want uh, me to do mine first? No, I know what yours is going to be, and I think it's, I think it's the same thing for me. Are we talking about the uh, the cover YouTube cover screamer? Oh yeah, that, that's a good one. Go with that one first, because mine's actually different. Okay, what did, so this, what did this she... is the new segment, the cloud chase of the week. What what did she say? Like I, I saved a man's life. Oh yeah, from yeah, heroin. Yeah, yeah. Like I yeah. saved a man from uh, ODing on heroin. Yeah, first of all, check out the vlog. Yeah, yeah <laughs> like exactly. and subscribe. Yeah, what's just... good YouTube? I'm here with this guy who just OD'd. Yeah, I'm about to yeah. call an ambulance. <laughs> She's sitting there with the phone. He's like passed out on the ground. <laughs> what's good YouTube? He's turning purple. Like it's just so first tragic. Of all, Number one, you probably didn't. Probably like, not. Knowing, like, I've watched her content before, like, her vlog content, and, like... It's pretty trash. I want, I would say... Fuck it, dude. It's K the female screamer on yeah, YouTube. This fuck fucking cares. check her out. Who gives a fuck? We got fucked anyways. She follows me on Twitter, too. Does she? Yeah. Oh, well. from, the, from the band, when we were going to have the band right, that's what Tyler I mean. Carter. Yeah, that's what I mean. We got fucked. Did mess- I got the email with Tyler Carter, though. That was pretty cool. That's how that was cool, started. yeah. He said I was sick on drums. So yeah, put that on my tombstone. But we got bumped for two other chicks, yeah, which course. totally ruined the whole gimmick. But yeah, fuck that, I'm not doing that bullshit. But yeah, cloud chase of the week, YouTube vlog. I saved a man's life. Yeah. Click here to learn more. Like a yeah, thumbnail like, dude, with like skull emojis. That's one thing that has always made me mad. Like I'm the type of person where if you're gonna if you're gonna do something good, like even donating to charity, like if you're doing it for the right reasons, you are not gonna post all about it on the internet and make a vlog about it. You're gonna just do it and keep it quiet. There's a chance that, you know, if you're doing something cool and you already document your life, there's a chance that you may want to go that route. True. Righteously. True. However, when you do something like that 
at that point you have to weigh out the options. Like, yes, I can get a I can get a lot of hits on this vlog from saying I saved a dude from OD, mm -hmm. but I also kind of look like a piece of shit because I'm right. I'm kind of like monetizing it for clout. I'm right. cloutitizing it. And that's what a lot of people are going to think. They're going to think that you're only doing it for the for uh, the you, views and stuff. You know stuff. that's what I thought and that's yeah, what I that's fucking what I thought said too. right away. Um so mine was a little different. My clout chase of the week was I saw a video on Twitter of a woman standing up in the passenger seat while a dude was driving giving birth to a baby. Oh yeah, I did see that one. That was that was <laughs> insane. Like <laughs> Like holy shit! Yeah. Like what the fuck? But I'm not. I'm not saying that it didn't really happen. I'm just saying like to record it, to post it, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera, the retweets are gonna be off the charts. Dude, yeah. she gave birth in a fucking yeah. Car. And it, was, it was like what they're like fourth or fifth kid or something like that. Like, that to me, I was like, dude, this is clout chasing to the extreme. Extreme, dude. This shit's getting out of control. The fact that she's at that point with having kids where she can just pop it she out. She can in the pop car. one. She just <laughs> yeah. stand up in the car. No, no drugs or anything like that. Just that pop it out in the passenger fucking seat. Fucking freaked me the fuck out. Yeah, I didn't watch the whole thing because I didn't want to see it, but I did. It was gross, dude. The I baby did come was across all, like, the video. Blue. It was all like, oh, uh, yeah, it was fucking uh, nasty, dude. But you see it every week, dude. And if you guys um, can think of any good examples over the past week of clout chasing that you've seen that are fucking ridiculous, let us know. Because I think it'd be funny to hit on those weekly. Yeah. The clout chase of the week. Yeah. Because there's every day. We talked about this last week, but it's, every day is just a rat race. Now with social media, yeah. It's just it's nonstop, just, brother. I know. It's nonstop. It's insane. And it, it's interesting because, you know, there's times when, you know, I... I I mean, posting online is wanting attention. Like, that's Absolutely what it is. Absolutely, it is. You know 100%. What I'm yeah. Well, you know, yesterday I hit you up like I wanted to post that video. Yeah. Like the cover that me and Mike did, like of the rap devil and the eight letters shit. Yeah. And, you know, ideally, I want people to watch it. Right. And I would want people to think it's funny. And I would want people to like it so mm -hmm. that I know they think it's funny and leave comments and shit like that. It's just like similar with this. Like, I don't want to. It's just the the never ending mind game of like, okay, I want to talk for an hour and twenty minutes with my brother, and I want people to care about it. Yeah, and I want people to like it and leave comments on it. Absolutely. How do we make that happen? Right. We, we could bring a girl in and have her give birth right here. That would, that would probably pop off the views like crazy. That'd be sick. That would be sick. I'm gonna ask around. We would go viral <laughs> for sure. I think I know a couple pregnant chicks. I can I can ask. Or we can just have somebody come in and just OD on heroin and yeah. then save their life. Save them. Hit him, hit him with the whatever the emergency drug is. Just yeah. hit him with that. I don't know, man. It's just crazy. It's just nonstop. I know. It's just, it's just a never ending, just scratching and clawing for that clout. So, and it's true too. Like, it, like anytime you post on the internet, it's, it's to get some sort of attention, no matter right. what you're saying. Like, and I always think back too to like back in high school, like when people would just. You know how you have those people that just update everybody all day long and right. everything that's going on. Like, oh, going to the dentist yes. just got done at the grocery store. And it's like, like, why do you I, I can't get into the mindset of like being that hooked on it to where like you got to let everybody know exactly what's going on at all times in your life. Yeah, I think there's three type three types of people on social media. There's probably way more than that, but you can pretty much break everyone into these three groups. There's one person who doesn't really post and just kind of looks at other people's shit. Yeah. Then there's the person who posts anything and everything yep. with no regard. They have no filter on their content. Yeah. They just throw anything up. They don't care. They say whatever. Yeah. And then there's the people that are pretty much tryhards. I don't mean that in a bad way. I just mean they put effort into it. Yeah. They, they really think about what they're doing and they're trying to portray a certain image. And you know what I mean? And that's those are the three groups. Like, yeah. Definitely. So, it is what it is. Um, Cloud Chase of the Week, though. That's 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 that. Um, God, this is fucking weird. This is so much different than our first run. Just having an an hour. We just long. have an empty slate. I know to fill with whatever. One one thing we should talk about the like speech uh, crutches. I said I feel like I said like a shitload in the first one. Yeah, and so I'm I, consciously I, trying not to do. Dude, I've I watched our podcast like five times, and every time I was just like, "Why do I keep fucking saying not only that?" I, I know, said it so like a hundred times. I wonder if we I, we probably do that in our normal speech, but we don't notice it because we're not on the outside watching ourselves talk and listening to ourselves talk. I know, and then it got me thinking. Like, I wonder if anybody else has heard me say it a million times. I'm like, dude, and stop fucking saying that. 
I watched it. I, I obviously had to bounce it out and put it together, which took way longer than I thought. But yeah. the cool thing about last week was I figured out how to do it. So right. now this week will be much easier, streamlined and all that. Yeah. I watched it a couple times just streaming through it to get it processed. And then last night I watched it on my TV when I was going. I went to bed at like 3 in the morning, so I was beat. I couldn't fall asleep because I was fucking laughing. <laughs> I really thought it was fucking hilarious. It was. I really did. Like, it definitely was. I thought it was on point. And, like, the, the shit that we said, like, it was, it was ballsy in a way, too, because we didn't really need to do that in any way. No. But. I'm glad and, I mean, we. I felt like we did have to do it. I feel like I did. I, fe- just I because felt like we had to do it to him. It's, it's, yeah. It's like, <laughs> like I said on the last one, like, I just, I'm so, not to get back on Eminem again, because we'll touch on it later, right. but. I just, I can't stand how much people, like, just want to hate him so much. It's crazy. It drives me nuts. It's like, crazy. For I, no good reason. I feel like last, I could be wrong. It seems to me as if last week, seems like the hate's died down quite a bit. Oh, it has definitely, yeah. People are kind of settled in on what it is. It's not, it just, I don't know. You can't really hate on it too much. I think people yeah. are maybe accepting that it was legendary. I hope so. I hope so, too. Whatever th- we did to help try and facilitate that, I guess. Yeah, um, it was all us. We definitely did it. Yeah, and I Thank expect God. some royalty checks yeah, at some and point. Hit us up, dude. <laughs> Put us on Shade 45. I mean, honestly. We can that'd, do, be, that'd be sick. We could do our radio show there, and Machine Gun Kelly's not allowed. No, nah, no way. I know M banned him already, but he's not allowed for sure now. No. Speaking of Machine Gun Kelly, real quick. Someone fucking pulled up in front of my apartment this week in a big black suburban. Yeah, I saw that story. Blasting rap devil, dude. And I thought for sure that MGK sent shooters at me because he heard <laughs> the podcast. I thought for sure. Mike brought up something interesting yesterday, too. He said that, and I kind of agree with him, he thinks that MGK had his Eminem disc ready. I think so, too. He just had it in his back pocket and well, was yeah, waiting for Eminem to say one thing about him, and then yeah. he was going to record the video to it and drop it. Well, because the whole, the whole tweet happened six years ago. Right. Obviously, everybody that's everybody's whole fucking point every time they talk about it. Like, oh, it's been so, six years, he hasn't responded. Right. But he also dissed him in that Tech 9 song. And you can dispute it if you want to. Right, those, that was a sub diss as well. Right. So he clearly was trying to throw some shots at him, hoping that he would take the bait and respond to him, and then he had the track ready to go. That I think the same thing, honestly. Because the, the reason why I think that for sure is his track is very vague Eminem disses. Yeah. Like, he definitely changed them. Like, he definitely wrote part of it because the age was accurate, all that shit. Yeah. But all the shit that he said in the song, he didn't respond to what Eminem said. No. He just did a generic far-reaching, overbearing diss the only that thing, he could drop at any time. The only line that I know of that could have been taken from one of Eminem's new songs was the, the dictionary line. Because yeah. in fall, Eminem does mention the dictionary, but... But I think Eminem's admitted that he reads the fucking dictionary. I was just going to say that. that He's mentioned that years ago. Yeah, I feel And like other people have talked about it, too, that he reads the dictionary. It's kind of a known fact, I feel like. Right. So he might not have written that line recently. That could have been old too. So music related, not Eminem. Finally, how about that fucking Roblox video, dude, with oh Lil Pump my and Kanye God, West? Dude, first of <laughs> that all, that shit is fucking funny as hell. Yeah. But again, cloud chasing. Absolutely. They knew that shit was gonna go viral, dude. Yeah. They, that's just clown, like you, tomfoolery. You know a funny side story on that? So you know who Adam Twenty Two is, right? Yeah, from No yeah, Jumper. Yeah. Okay. So he. He posted on Instagram, I think, and said that Lil Pump went and spent like he spent like tens, maybe like ten thousand dollars on clothes, on like Gucci for that, shit, right? For like that bought- video, and then he got there, and Kanye was like, "Nah, dude, you're wearing Roblox. this." Roblox. <laughs> yeah, it's so funny though. I I gotta say, like, it really cracked me up. The song's pretty catchy too. It was interesting. I wasn't that big of a fan of it, but the video was funny. The video was mad funny. Did yeah. you see the meme of uh, Skeeter and Doug? Like, yeah, that was awesome. Yeah. And TMG, dude, stay safe. If you look up Tiny Meat Gang, stay safe. They wore these fucking, what are they, C- civilian compliance that's what suits? I, that's what I call them. I don't know just what they're actually the called. Yeah. They're just these big blow-up suits, like a fat suit, basically. Yeah. And they wore them in this video. And I'm not saying that they stole it. I'm not even saying that anyone ever saw Tiny Meat Gang. But the joke is the same. It's like we're wearing these big-ass suits. Yeah. and we're I kind mean, of moving. Post, Post Malone knows about them. Right. I feel like someone who directed the screenplay of that like who came up with somehow that idea came down that i think it did too because it really 
It's I, very. I was, I was watching like the, it's just the punchline's the same. Yeah. We're wearing these big ass suits and we look ridiculous. Right. That's that's the whole thing. And yeah. obviously, you know, if they just dropped that song and they were just like riding around in dope cars and like smoking weed and like there were bitches dancing, like it would have popped off a little bit, but it wouldn't have went like viral. It wouldn't have got all the retweets. No. Like when you see those two dressed up like Roblox, you immediately have to retweet Dude, that. Those... Be like, what the fuck is going on? You know what I was thinking about that would be fucking hilarious? Like, because you know how sometimes clothing styles get out of control absolutely i was thinking like what if somewhere down the line in the future like that was like like what if one of those big name clothing companies like made, <laughs> that, the, the made that and like you just you were just walking down the street and you saw some young kid walking down the street in that yeah i would love to pull up to work and get on dude <laughs> we just walk right in the door and like not be able to fit through the doorway like you gotta like turn sideways and fucking just thinking of that became a style like insane and it all pretty much seemed like it started basically from People roasting Kanye's flip flops because Which, then he yeah. took the picture in the giant flip flops and then he wore the flip flops with the fucking shoulder pads. Yeah. The fucking Mike Allstott shoulder pads. Yeah. <laughs> Shit was funny. I don't know. What are you going to do? I yeah. liked it. I mean, I he's, like he's known to be a troll, so. Right. He's, Kanye's fucking funny. Yeah. What, what can you really say? Oh, boy. Here we go. I'm reaching, dude. What, what else do we. Uh, I mean, we can make the. Oh, well, hold on. Do you, you, you don't really watch football. No. Which is actually probably good because it will stop this from turning into a sports podcast yeah, because it's not. That's there's, what there's already plenty of those in Lockport. There's there's a person who handles that already and there's people who have that on lock. So yeah, and I mean we don't need to do that, but your burning bridges one was a lot of sports. Like seventy five percent sports. Which so. is chill. I love sports. I football's my favorite. Um but do you know about Nathan Peterman? Do you know who that is? Uh Vaguely, this I know he the, plays for the Bills. The quarterback for the Bills. Yeah. That they started last year. He threw five picks and yes. a half. Okay, yeah, I know who that and is. And then this year they kept only their rookie, who's never played in the NFL before, and this guy Peterman, who had the worst game of all time. Yeah, they started him last week for game one. He, you know, in Madden, like when you go to the passing stats and it shows your QB rating, uh-huh. like based off your yards and touchdowns and shit. Yeah, zero rating. 0.0 rating. That's what his real life rating is? His, yes. Jesus. He threw like 20 passes. I think he completed <laughs> six of them for like 30 yards, and he had two picks. Uh, and he was throwing some of the worst passes of all time. Now, what people are saying, and the reason why I'm bringing this up, Colin Kaepernick still doesn't have a job. Right. And we talked about Colin Kaepernick last week. Yep. About people burning their shit. Yep. If Colin Kaepernick was any other fucking person who did not have the stigma attached to him that he does. And to be fair, he brought that stigma on himself. He did. Yeah. So, you know, like, the fact that this Nathan Peterman dude has a job playing, <laughs> he's one of the worst <laughs> fucking players of all time. Like, it's a joke, dude. Like, after the game, they asked the coach, who looks like Bill Burr, they asked him, like... I was wondering what your tweet meant. I didn't understand <laughs> it, but no. It looks just like... This is, this is, we call His name's McDermott. We like to call him McDumbass when he does shit like this, but... <laughs> They asked him, like, so how do you feel about Nathan Peterman? Like, is he going to be starting next week, or are we going to turn it over to the rookies? Like, you know, I really just got to take a look at the film to really assess. He had a zero rating. Dude. Zero. And it was awful. And they're, they're handing the reins over to Allen. But I just think it's it, it would be so sick if Buffalo signed Colin Kaepernick. That'd be awesome. Dude, imagine the press. Like, imagine... Dude, the whole world would be watching that first Bills game. Oh, absolutely. And, dude, Colin Kaepernick took the 49ers to the Super Bowl. He's actually pretty fucking good. Pretty yeah. fucking good. He's Compared to Nate Peterman, he's like fucking Eminem compared to yeah. Lil Pump, I guess. I don't fucking know. but That and, I mean, oh, I just fucking lost my train of thought. What the hell was I going to say? I just would love to see Kaepernick in the Bills uni. Oh, yeah. Buffalo is, like, very racist. Dude. I'm so glad you said that because when he he was on the San Francisco 49ers two years ago, and that's when the whole anthem shit started. Uh-huh. So that's when he started becoming this like villainous character to conservatives and shit, racist yeah. people. He played in Buffalo that year, and he said, and everyone else at that game said, it was by far the worst reaction he's ever got. Yeah. Dude, he was getting like CM Punk level heat. Yeah, like, dude. Like Triple H 2000 level heat. Buffalo's horrible when it comes to that kind of they stuff. They fucking, they were just brutal, dude. They were like lighting like dolls of him on fire, like life size re- replica dolls of him on fire, like See, burning his jerseys. 
that throwing guy, dart like dart boards with his face, all that corny shit. Like I know a lot of people are proud of like the Bills fan base for how crazy they are. I think it's retarded. It's kind of like your. It's kind of like if your dad's like an alcoholic. Right, like you love him, but like he's embarrassing at family parties. Like, it's, yeah, it's, yeah, exactly. Like, and, nationwide, it's, it is fun. I mean, acting like a fucking asshole is fun. Yeah, but I think they push it too far. And I like a lot of the stuff I see on the internet. I'm like, you guys are just fucking stupid. But and it's really it became something once it started getting publicized. Yeah, again, because then people realized, oh fuck, if I go through a flaming table, not only am I acting like an asshole, but I'm gonna end up on bar stool. I was just gonna say that. Like, yeah. you know what I'm saying? So again, it all comes back to cloud chasing. That's what kind of makes me happy though, like because of how racist they are and how they were. Obviously, you just told me how they were towards Colin, but yeah, they were brutal. It it actually I get joy now out of the fact that the Bills are so terrible and they they're, do so bad every I gotta year. say, you know, they're probably the worst team in the league. This year or just yes, in general? This yeah. year. They're probably the absolute worst. Like based on their roster, their performance, they are the worst team in the league. And they're in big trouble because all they have is a rookie in Peterman. They need <laughs> Kaepernick, dude. Let me tell you something. Peterman is gonna kill himself. So this week they're yeah. facing the Chargers, which was the team last year that he played. When he threw the five picks in one oh, half, worst boy. game of all time. So I was thinking, if they start him, dude, he's going to be having like Vietnam acid flashbacks. Yeah, P- like, PTSD. Right. Dude. When he sees those uniforms across from him, dude, he's going to have a full on fucking panic attack. He's going to freeze up and just get <laughs> nailed. It's going to be br- <laughs> and there was this video. So like last year, you know, the Bills like kind of slid in ass backwards to the playoffs. Yeah. So when the play happened that got them into the playoffs, it wasn't in their game. It was in a different game. They mm-hmm. needed a certain team to win. When that play occurred, they had a camera on the Bills locker room, yeah. and everyone went fucking ham. Like everyone went nuts because they broke the playoff streak. Right. I was thinking that's exactly what the footage would look like in the Chargers locker room when McDumbass does his press conferences and says Peterman's starting. <laughs> everyone's gonna be fucking ham, dude. Popping sham- champagne bottles and shit, just getting litty because they know they're facing Peterman again. Every every team that the Bills play, they're like, man, I hope they put Peterman. <laughs> Please in. start Peterman. <laughs> Uh, yeah, we're gonna we're gonna go with Peterman this week. Oh, let's go! <laughs> Every fucking just everyone going ham, but it's not happening unless Allen gets hurt. He might pop in, but I honestly feel bad for the guy though. So do I, dude. He's gonna because like, himself. I mean, he's probably not a bad player. Like, obviously, he made it professionally, so he's right. got to be decent. But like, to go into your first professional game and just oh blow God. it like that and just. <laughs> You never. I don't feel like you can ever recover from that. You can't because no. Even if you start doing well, everyone's always going to remember how bad you were in that first game. Think of any activity you've ever done, like yeah. just anything. Like I'm trying to think. Like let's say you're playing a show. Like you're in a band. You're playing a show. Your first show, you go up and you just fucking bomb. Yeah. You don't play anything right. You get yeah. booed off stage. You would be so rocked mentally. Yeah. To like try and definitely. come back from that would just be impossible. Yeah. And it was like on a, and furthermore, it was on like a national stage. Everyone, he's like a, he's a running joke now. I know, it's terrible. Peter Trash. Like, I do feel bad for him, but they hung him out to dry. Man. Uh, yeah. And at the same time, like, if, if you're going to play professionally, dude, you got to, you got to bring it when you get out there. Yeah. You definitely you can't, bring it. you can't be throwing five interceptions like you that. Can't, you just can't let that happen. That was mind blowing to me. If, honestly, if that was me and I got in that game and I threw five interceptions after the fifth one, no, not even that. After the Probably third, the third, the yeah. third one, third I would have been in like, the first quarter. I would have been like, "Coach, I'm done. You got, you got to get me out of here." And the, the whole thing with that was that was when they benched Tyrod. Yeah, and um, that was controversial. And obviously, they got rid of Tyrod. Yep. And sent him to the Browns with no better option. And I saw this post because it was talking about Peterman might really start again. The Bills coach is really that dumb. That's basically what the article was. <laughs> and in the comments, it listed all of Tyrod Taylor's stats. Yeah. And all of Peterman's stats. And they oh, were, yeah, I they saw were, that. And it, and it just said at the bottom. And that was. I, I wish I could think of something that's different about Peterman and Tyrod Taylor yeah. that would make certain Bills fans prefer Peterman. It, it really blows my mind. I can't. I it's a real head scratcher what it could possibly be. I know. It couldn't, know what it, is. it couldn't be the skin color. I'm not saying that anyone who thinks Tyrod sucks is racist because that's not true. I mean, he's a different style quarterback that you might just not like. Like, he's not a Tom Brady. He, he play, has a whole different style. So if you want a traditional quarterback, you don't want Ty, Tyrod Taylor and team. He's by far the best quarterback that they've had in a while. And out of the current QBs they have, it's not even close. They should have kept him. Yeah. And you got to just be able to see, like, starting Nate Peterman should never be an option. Ever. It yeah. just shouldn't. So we'll see what happens. They got the Chargers and, and Allen starting and, and whatnot, but... I think uh, I think most people who don't like Tyrod are racist. 
At least going based off of my job, like the people I deal with at work. It's definitely a factor in a lot of it, I feel like. All yeah. of them came in and were saying some racist stuff about him. And right. It just oh, kinda... yeah, get get that guy out of here. You put Peterman in. He's he's white and this and that. It's like... Putting Peterman in it should not be, is not the answer, bro. It's just not the answer. I'm going to level with everybody here. <laughs> and you can take it offensive if you want to, but... When it comes, we talked about it last time, when it comes between black people and white people, when it comes to sports, black people are better. They're better. All around. Quarterback's a little tricky because that's yeah. one thing that white people kind of have a hold on a little bit. There's a lot of great black quarterbacks, though. Yeah. You're looking at one right here. But, um, yeah, I mean, that there's just, again, I hate to use the word again, but that's the stigma of the black quarterback. It's like everyone thinks that he's going to play like Mike, Michael Mike Vick. Vick. Yeah, yeah he's going to run all the time. This isn't really the case. And Tyrod was more like that style. I mean, but he he was overall just way better than any option they have. And like and the way he got ran out of town was pretty sad, actually. Honestly, if they are <laughs> if they are like Mike Vick and they're good at it, who cares? I mean, dude, who wouldn't want fucking Mike Vick on your right. squad? Right. Uh, the whole th it's about winning games and getting to the playoffs and winning the Super Bowl. So Which, if, if your quarterback can get you more touchdowns, then what does it matter if he runs instead of passes? Keep I, in mind, uh, Tyrod Taylor did end a 17-year playoff drought. Yeah, take and that. And then they just traded him to Cleveland. Yeah, how's that so. feel, white guys? <laughs> <That's funny. laughs> oh, yeah, white guys. <laughs> hey, white Bills fans. Or I'm not. I hate when people say that because people are doing that with the Nike shit too, like white people. Yeah. I know what they mean. They're not talking about every white person, I know. obviously. But I'll, I'll, you know, I'll specify. Racist white Bills fans, you're going to have to live with the fact that Tyrod Taylor broke the playoff yeah. drought. And guess what? The Bills aren't probably going back for a long time. It doesn't nope. look like it. I mean, anything could happen. I hope they do. But based on what they looked like last Sunday, it's, uh, it's not fucking good, bro. It's not looking good at all. No, nope, not as long as there's a white guy at QB. No. Definitely not. They need they need to get a black quarterback like that. <laughs> <laughs> Try and we got to get more black guys on this team. <laughs> <laughs> the honest moment. The coach fucking was finally honest about it. And then gets fired for it. Yeah, it's just one of those things you just can't say. Like, you know, like everyone was But why it. not, though? I don't know. It's a compliment. You guys are amazing athletes. Like Ima it's Imagine if, like, your basketball team was all white guys and you were just going to gyms getting lit up by teams. Right. And you're like, man, what can we do? <laughs> I don't know. Who can we get? Like, I, I, you know, it seems like we're just not as quick. Like, I don't know. Yeah. What you need some Iversons and some Kobe's <laughs> on that team. Like, like, they keep dunking on us and none of us can even dunk. So I don't really know. My guys can't even make it three inches off the ground. It's got to be our sneakers, dude. It's because <laughs> yeah. we're, we're wearing Nikes. We got to yeah. light these fuckers on fire yeah. and get some Adidas. Yeah. Some Yeezy boosts. <laughs> <laughs> Some special ed nines, the Yeezy boost. <laughs> I just don't. I never understood that. Why it's it's offensive to say that? Like to say that you guys are better at sports than white guys are. It, it's weird because you can say the inverse. Like, there's nothing wrong with saying white guys can't can't dance, white guys can't jump. Right. That's fine. That's funny. But it, for some reason, if you say like black guys can jump, it's like whoa, dude. Yeah. What, I, do, you, what do you mean? What do you mean black guy? Like I'm. I mean guys who are black can jump high. That's what I mean. You guys have... That's literally what I'm saying. It's it's genetics. Well, it's you, scientifically proven, but yeah. also, you don't even need to get into the science or, like, the skeletal muscular system. Right. All you need to do is play basketball with some black guys. Yes. That's all you need to do. That's the only data that you need to capture. Or even even playing football. Like, yeah. dude, when I even when I played Little Loop back in the day, like, <laughs> I remember... Speed difference. Dude, they, they brought, they brought um, Jason Winters down from... Oh God! Uh, what was the uh, the the oldest team? Was it the they called them the Buccaneers, right? Probably. And then mine, I, name. I forget what mine was, but they brought him down for some reason, dude. He was smoking everybody. No one could catch him, dude. On our modified team in eighth grade, we had Krishan, who was an amazing athlete and was black. Yeah. We had Krishan playing running back on the first team, so it was first team was red. So like that was your best players versus their best players. Then every quarter, the next. Second string would come in and play against second string. And then third string would come in and play against third string. Yeah. We had Chris Sean as the running back on first string, and he would fucking dice everybody. Yep. And we let him play quarterback on third string. Yeah. And that's when it really got fucking out of control. Because then it was all their bums, and we would just do quarterback runs and shit. Yeah. And he was basically... I remember that, too. He was just having a field day, dude. He was yeah. just having fun out there. It's just... A, it's a fact. It is what you it guys, is. You guys you just can't argue with, with the it. data, dude. Like, yeah. Just look at the data. That's all you need to do. It is what it is. Um, <clears throat> what the fuck else, dude? 
There's gotta be more. Man, I wish Eminem dropped an album this week. I know. Dude, what if he just started dropping them just <laughs> once a week? <laughs> <laughs> Eminem album every week. He just, every week is just responding to what everyone said that week about his last album. Every week, every album, there's new skits from Paul Rosenberg. He's been like, dude, come dude, on, man. You gotta seriously, stop. This is the fifth album responding to people, man. I'm not gonna be your manager anymore. It, it, dude, don't put this message on the fucking new album either. I'm getting sick of that shit. <laughs> Yo, I wish. Oh, okay. Here we go. Let's talk about the interviews. Are we gonna talk about that? That's yeah. not really where I was going. Oh, all right. We'll go where wow, you're gonna dude. go. Now, look. I messed up the flow. Fuck Sorry. this show, dude. Fuck Twin Snake. <laughs> Fucking losers. I was just going to say, new music. Okay? So Eminem came out. This doesn't matter to a lot of you, but why don't we came out? Two of my favorite artists. Architects, the band. Yeah, yeah, okay. Dropped a new song. And I would say pound for pound, probably collectively and individually our favorite band. Yes. Like, without a doubt. They're Architects, the- best band in the world. If you ask one of us. They are my favorite musical artist in any genre of all time. See, that that I would have to sort out, but they're definitely my favorite band. Yeah. And they dropped a new song. Long story short, the principal songwriter, guitarist, brother of the drummer, guy who wrote all the lyrics, founder of the band, Mm -hmm. he died of cancer a little over two years ago, and he wrote all their music, and um, he passed away tragically, and Mm -hmm. it was really fucking sad, and it seemed like the band was going to die off, um, and they somehow banded together and in his honor and in, in his memoriam wrote a new album yeah. and the new song the new single what the fuck's it called like, hereafter hereafter yeah. um is fucking sick it and, is and i know there's probably a lot of you out there maybe you don't fuck with heavy music like whatever just skip actually you know what no fuck that if you don't listen to heavy music why don't you stop being a fucking pussy yeah and try something different that you haven't listened to before dude everybody stop being a bitch dude like you can't just write something just check it out I know. All right? Just fucking check it out. I don't like the screaming. What is this satanic shit? You're a dumbass. Yeah. You're a fucking dumbass, dude. The fucking satanic thing. Like, dude, first of all, okay. Like, bands like Slayer and stuff like that, like, yeah, they are satanic. But that's from 1980, dog. That's 40 years ago. Bands nowadays, especially bands like Architects and Northlane and all that, they're very socially and spiritually conscious bands and they write about things like political corruption and the environment and animal rights and things like that they're not satanic they're like not at all they're just normal just good people and they just make heavy music and it's good music if you like aggressive music if you like instrument playing which i know is kind of rare these days like yeah. popular music but just check it out hereafter architects it's fucking sick um it's just crazy dude all this great music like it feels like it's tailored to me I was nervous, to be honest. Like, I was too, I, because when, like, like we, I just explained the story kind of yeah. real quickly, but I didn't know what was going to happen. And I didn't want the band to end. That seems unfair. Because I didn't want them to end, and I was afraid of that happening, especially because they, they, all of them collectively got real quiet on social media for yeah. the last, like, six or seven months. But not only that, I didn't, because Tom wrote everything, I didn't know what it's they like, were going to sound like now. How can you do it? Right. But, but they, they pulled it off. They dude. did a good job, honestly. The song's I mean, fucking sick. I can't wait for the album, man. It's going to be fucking sick. You can tell it's not him, obviously. You can tell it's not him, but you can tell that they're honoring his sound. His sound. Yeah. And they're paying hom- homage to it. Is and they it did homage a good or job. homage? I don't know. Either way. Fuck, dude. But, but they did a great job. The they- rules. I don't expect anyone to probably check it out that wouldn't already, but... No, but you should, though. I mean... Why not? We haven't this... been wrong yet, dude. We told you Eminem was sick, and that is sick, so fucking, why not? Plus, they're different, too. They don't They do, not do like, when the screaming and stuff, like, they don't do the deep, guttural, like, Parkway Drive-type screaming. Like, they do... It's more yelling, if anything. Maybe you'll dig it. Try something new. At least or... listen to the instruments. At least listen to just the music. Try to... If you don't like the vocals, just try to like drown them out and listen to the actual Or don't. Music. Fuck you. I don't really care. Yeah, whatever. Wanna, you know, whatever. Just either. do whatever you want. Go listen to the Roblox shit. Yeah, they're an amazing band. Extremely <laughs> talented. And if you don't like it, I think you're a fucking idiot. So. um, Okay, here we go. Another standstill. Oh, you were going to talk about the Eminem interviews. Yeah. Which are I dope. I don't remember exactly where I was going to go with it, though. What, uh, what were we talking about I just think it's cool. I, um... I, I think it's just cool that he did those because he put the music out. The music speaks for itself. Yeah. He's been dropping video. He dropped Lucky You video today, which is really cool, I thought. Yeah, that video was good. And I I didn't actually make the connection of what it was about at first. But then I read the comments on the video and I actually... The somebody, video, what the video was about? Yeah, somebody brought up a really interesting point. What's the interesting point? Because I don't really know either. All those zombies 
Like, you know, in the middle of the video, yeah, he's like, like, dude, are they, are they, are they copying. copying everything? He's right. talking about, like, other rappers. Yeah, yeah, they're like, copying. They, they've been copying they everything what, we've been doing yeah. the whole time. I, oh, it, well, I, got I don't know. That, so, I was right. focusing so much on the song, I didn't even... It was a dope video, though. I'm, I'm glad he's... Dude, I gotta say, the rollout, and I don't want to turn into the Kamikaze Hour again, but the rollout of this album, and the marketing of this album, and the drops, and the follow-ups have just been on point. Yeah. This is a master class in how to captivate the industry. Yeah, definitely. And everyone should fucking take notes on this because it really is something special. Like, I really feel like we're witnessing pure greatness on display. I mean, it's just the interviews are awesome because it's like a podcast style response. Yeah. And we get to hear Eminem's thoughts on, like, why he did certain things. Like, yeah, the music speaks for itself. But then he explains to you why he wrote certain things, yeah. why he took certain shots at people. And... He's so calm and calculated and intelligent when he like speaks. Like he wasn't o- emotional about it. I feel like I no. know we're biased because we're on his team, but yeah. you know it just seemed like he's the one in control. Like it seems like he's the one steering the plane. I guess no. So and to he speak. he made a really good point about the whole MGK thing. Like when when he brought up the whole blackballing him thing, and Sway was asking him like, "Did you do that?" And he was like, "Fuck no." Like right? Why would I? Your MGK isn't even in the conversation. Which like, is true. He's not that impor- is a fact. Yeah, he's not important to me at all. But then you could argue, <clears throat> well, yeah, but he had issues with MGK because of the thing about his daughter. and She did. But I don't know. He, he, it didn't seem like he was lying. It didn't seem like he was lying. I thought he was pretty forthcoming. And he, he did pretty say, much like, rocked those guys, too, yeah. I mean, for the most part. And he did say, like, I feel bad because now I feel like, like I'm like responsible. He's responsible for something he didn't do. Right. And he said how he didn't want to ever even respond to it because he knew it would blow him up, which is exactly what happened. Yep. He said he heard Rap Devil and he said he thought it was pretty decent for him. Yeah. Which I thought it was funny. And he said he had some good lines, he had which some is good lines. the same thing everybody's been That's, saying about dude, it. Dude, it was so incredible how on point with Eminem we were, yeah. I thought. Like, yeah, definitely. We, he was literally, when he was explaining the album and why he did it and what he accomplished with the album. It's pretty much exactly I feel like what we said. covered exactly yeah. what he said. Which was pretty cool, but um, okay, okay. I remember what I was gonna say. Mm-hmm. At the end of the, at the end of part two, when they show the preview for part three, he talked. They were talking about Dre and how much of a hand he had in the new album, right. and he said that Dre deaded a song because he went too far. He went too yeah. That see again. This goes back to what I was saying about this rollout and this marketing and shit. Yeah, that's gonna make people be like. We gotta hear that. Unreleased. Exactly. That's how it made me feel. We I was like, dude, I, hear... I need to hear that. What was the fire flames ether that Dre said? No, nah, and we yeah. can't. That's too much. Like, like, we gotta hear that. Especially with the amount of stuff that Eminem does in his music. Like, how, f- how... he had to have gone pretty fucking far for Dre uh, to be like, dude, I don't know about that. I one. can't put my name on that. Yeah, dog. I'm sorry. I want to hear that shit badly. I wanted to go. I put up a, a question thing in my Insta. Yeah. Um, one question from. Paul Castleberry, uh, is Elon Musk the savior of humanity? Um, He's up there, one of the biggest he, visionaries, and also Elon, fuck my wife. Yeah, he honestly he could be. I mean, he's, just what he's, he's done, sick. what he's done with just cars alone is pretty insane. Like the fact that you can get on the highway and just put your car on autopilot and just chill out and let your car do all the driving, like that's insane. I'm pretty sure he also like invented like PayPal. And he also, oh, did he really? I he didn't know that. He invented a bunch of shit. He's like a total like visionary. Like he's just like a icon. And like I, I follow him on, on uh, Twitter, and he talks about all the new features that they're putting in all the new Teslas. Like, dude, the shit that he—it's insane. Dude, there's some we can talk about that we didn't even plan on talking about, but the like meme—it really happened. But when he was on Joe Rogan's podcast, oh yeah, smoking the and joint, he was smoking a joint. Like he looks like a mad scientist. It's so like grade schoolish, like how like the stock dropped and shit. Like, dude. He's Elon Musk. Like he can smoke weed. Like it doesn't. Oh my god! Did that matter. really? Did that really happen? Yeah, the stock dropped, and like people were like, "Oh, he's he's oh, all my fuck he's a god. loose cannon. Like he can't yeah, be trusted." But then, but then he's one of the smartest people like ever. Dude, if you would have asked them the day before that, like, "Oh, do you think weed should be legal?" Oh yeah, definitely. Weed should definitely be legal. It's just insane. And then it's like, "Oh wait a minute, Elon smoking? No, fuck that." Pretty sure he's gonna be fine. Like he's still like really intelligent and shit. I don't think it's yeah, and make a really difference. intelligent people smoke weed because they're. They, a they lot of them chill. Yeah, a lot of them need it. Their brains work so goddamn fast. They need something to calm them down a little bit. Wade said, Hove vs. M discussion. I'll call in. <laughs> Would love to do that. Would love to discuss that with you, Wade. I don't know. I'm going to have to EQ your voice so people can understand it. I'm going to have to like turn the bass all the way down and <laughs> pump the fucking treble. We're going to have to get like a special mic so we can understand your ass. No, seriously, though. I think it would be funny. 
And hopefully there's a way where you can be on the show sometime, Wade, because that would be really interesting to do. I think it'd just be hilarious, like a white guy standing for Eminem and then a black dude next to him standing for Jay-Z saying, oh, he's actually the GOAT. Yeah. Like, oh, come on, that's license to print money. Yeah. <laughs> dude, I had, <laughs> Who would ever thought that could happen? I had a an idea for a Twitter post the other day about Jay-Z fans, but I didn't post it because I think it would have pissed a lot of people off. Well, and not only would it have pissed this... people off, but you know, like... It's so weird on social media when you know someone stands for something and you want to talk shit about it. Yeah. Because it's like, you know they're going to... If I post something, though, it's it's always 100% a joke. It's yeah, never... of course. Basically, what it was is I saw this... Um, I followed this news thing on Twitter, and they were talking about how there was a call that came in that, like, four dudes were banging in the men's bathroom or something like that. And this... Oh, fuck. <laughs> yeah, really? so this person posted a GIF, and it was just... <laughs> The gif was all these, just all these like really fruity looking gay dudes just dancing together. And I was going to post it and put when Jay-Z fans get together. Oh, dude, that was <laughs> Liddy. Come on, son. I didn't do it, though. So, um, Livy, who's Liddy on Insta, shout out to Livy on IG. She keeps it real. She definitely, she she goes ham on her post. She really, I don't know who that is. She, I know. I don't know why I'm talking to you. Like, <laughs> I'm talking about. She said thoughts on the Carter 5. Do we have any thoughts on the Carter 5? I mean, it hasn't dropped yet. We only got album artwork. I mean, I'm not... When did that drop, though? Because I don't even uh, know about any of this. A couple days ago, I think. Weezy oh. F is a legend, though. Yeah. I'm definitely going to check out new Lil Wayne. Like, I, I, he's up there with the all-timers. I mean, I... I don't have very high expectations, but, dude, he's a he's a goat. I mean, it is what it is. Like, you just... Definitely. I mean, I'll, new, I'll, acknowledge, check out. I'll acknowledge that he's definitely a legend, but I've... There's not a single Little Wayne song out there that I like. Wow, honestly, really? not yeah, a not one? a single one, except for maybe what about "Steady Mobbing," dude. Maybe what was that real old one? "The Block Is Hot" with okay. Hot Boys. That was that was good, but I just I don't not know. Even it's, like "Go DJ," dude. Nah, man. I just I just don't what like. What about the Hardball theme with Lil Bow Wow and? Okay, that was cool. <laughs> I'll, give him, I'll give him that one. That's his best track. Yeah, Hands I'll give down. him that one. But yeah, I just never I don't know. I just never liked his style, and I didn't like his voice. So thoughts on the Carter Five? I don't know. The album artwork was cool. What is it? It's, uh, it's got to be here, him. Let me, right? let me pull it up. Because I mean, I feel like the Carter is always a picture of him as a baby or something, right? Or is that not the case? I think it was in the past, but I don't think this one was. It's weird thinking back to like when Lil Wayne ruled the industry. Like he was the top dog. Oh, I know. When we were in high school, he was yeah. the guy, and then pretty much Drake took over. And once Drake took over, it was a wrap just that that's tight man i don't think he put any songs out yet i think it's just the album artwork, well thoughts so. on the carter five we'll see that's my thoughts how about that there i you mean go, it is cool that he's i don't know like you were saying earlier it just seems like music this year like especially just recently like it's just even cannabis put out a new song recently really yeah and like there was the whole thing with uh jermaine dupree and Ludacris remaking welcome to atlanta for the Falcons that and was, stuff like uh, that. And that was pretty cheesy. Was it really? I didn't watch it. It was pretty. It was all like shoehorned football lyrics, oh. like saying players' names and shit. Oh yeah, that's. And then you had like Matt Ryan, who was a fucking dweeb, like standing there, and they're like rapping around him. Plus, fuck the Falcons. Yeah. All right, shout I'm out glad. to the Bucks for going off, and shout out to Fitz Magic. I'm glad I didn't watch it then. If it was Bucks that are facing the Super Bowl champions. We got to take that belt from them. But yeah, the Atlanta Falcons song. It was just like you don't want to see a classic rap song be rewritten with shoehorned in lyrics to fit something for an ad. Yeah, I didn't know they did that. I thought it was takes the steam out. I thought it was just like something like they got back together and just performed it for something. I didn't know they chill. I mean it's about Atlanta and they're from Atlanta, so it makes sense, but Yeah. Kinda whack. That's corny though. Kind of whack. Don't do that. No. I don't think it was a good move overall. Especially like when you try to rewrite lyrics like that about something like that, like it always comes out corny. Very corny. No matter what you do. Because you you have to try to force very little information into a song and right. it's basically all you have is like the team colors the players and that's it that's yeah. all you have to player rap about. names yeah. talk about the name of the stadium which i'm pretty yeah. sure they did that's all you got yeah it didn't uh it wasn't great i'll just say that where are we at 53 all right we can go for a little while um one thing i wanted to kind of talk about and i don't know how to really get to this naturally i'm pretty sure that's impossible after what i just said but I was thinking about just the concept of how things work now. Like if, if we even just like the way f we talk about cloud chasing a lot and we talk about like internet fame a lot. Mm -hmm. 
And what's interesting to me now, I think you said this last episode, last week, but like back in the day when someone blew up and they were a pop culture icon, like everyone knew about them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? There wasn't all these like subdivisions of like, like nowadays you can be like, you can be so-called famous and have people not know who the fuck you are. Yeah, that's because I, I when I watched it back, like that's what I was thinking about. Like, I would say probably since since Drake, there really hasn't been any like stars. Right. There's no stars anymore. Like, like dude, there's Post Malone is one of the biggest artists in the world today. Yeah. There's a lot of people who have never heard of Post Malone or heard a Post Malone song. Right. Whereas you back- can you can avoid like it's not like back in the day when you were fed pop culture through all the same ways we all watch trl we all listen to the radio yeah. we all bought cds etc yeah. etc et now it's like people have so much freedom of choice you know what i'm saying i one thing i always think of with this is wrestling like 90 percent, maybe probably more than that 95 percent of people like if they see seth rollins in a grocery store they're not gonna no have they're not it's not gonna click but if they see stone cold in a grocery store they're gonna be or like hulk holy, hogan yeah they're gonna be like holy shit and like when we look at guys like seth Rollins, we think like holy fuck he's fucking uber famous but like yeah he is in the wrestling bubble right that's the thing like everything exists in a bubble now yeah you know what i mean definitely everything's in its own like there everything has its own subdivision of fame yeah like yeah just think of like how many people watch like the tiny meat gang or how many people fuck with like cody Ko's videos and shit yeah it seems like he's famous, but it depends on what you mean by fit. Like, do you mean like famous is in like old school fame? Because no, no, definitely not. But you can have fame on like in your own thing that you create, which I actually think is pretty fucking cool. It is definitely. It, it's kind of it kind of sucks now that you can't have like that huge superstar star yeah. anymore. Like, it's just not really feasible. I mean, think back to like when Fifty Cent first came out. Like everybody knows who he is now, right? Because he came out during that time. He's an icon. It's just, it's just weird. It doesn't seem like stuff is like timeless anymore. No, I think unfortunately with the internet, a lot of things have kind of lost their, um, like importance. Like, yeah, like no. when when people drop albums and stuff like that. Like it's not. I remember back being a kid, like waiting for stuff to drop and like being super excited for months about it, and now it's like. You know, no one really, it's it's not really that big of a deal, even if they promote it well. And then once it drops, everybody's all pumped on it for like a day and then it's over. But like back in the day when an album would come out, people would listen to that for months. Even with, you know, event, current events, it's like yeah. big scandal, everyone's talking about it, gone. Yep. Then then the next day, next thing, it's like um, something I texted you about, the, the Serena Williams like cartoon. Yeah, everyone's over it already. It's over. Yeah. I texted you two days ago because I wanted to talk about it because it was relevant. And yeah. I thought, oh, yeah, this is really popping it's off right now. It's not relevant anymore. No it's one done. Even cares. There's no cares. There's no point in talking about it because it's over. I know. And that's that's, that's kind crazy of, to me. It's a scary thing because it doesn't matter how fucked up the thing is that happened. People forget about it in a day right. or two. Like, Dude, Mac Miller is over. Yeah. And like, like, even his, if, like all, it was one day's worth of everyone talking about it. Yep. Yeah, I mean, his album sales went up and like people are fucking with his music that liked him. But of course, that's going to happen. But like we've just we just every move on to the next thing. Hamster yep. wheel, just nonstop fucking rotating pop culture. Just even every day, more, endless. Even the more serious things like school shootings or like like the shit going out with police killing people. And like like that. Sh- it's only like it's only popping for like a day, maybe two. And then it's over. That's so funny and it's like, to say pop, like pop. Yeah, I, I, could, I couldn't think of another word to use. <laughs> no, man, but, that school shooting was popping yesterday, dude. But the like, fuck? you I know, know you a, bunch, a bunch of kids get murdered, and it's like everybody's all up in arms about it for 24 hours, and then and then we just move on. on. I think wait, shout out to Wade again, but he always says the microwave era. Yeah, and that's totally what we're in. Like, it's just instant gratification. Everyone blows their load, gets their tweets off, gets their Facebook speech off, yep. does their podcast, yep. and then the next day. Start the whole fucking thing over again. Yep. It's just a crazy time to be alive. Like I feel like I'm on a fucking ride in an amusement park because there's no stability. Like I never no. feel like I have my feet sunk in because everything is just changing so much so fast all yeah. the time. And there's just it's oh, crazy. It's so hard to like keep up with everything that's fucking going on. And a lot of times like I don't want to, but it's hard not to get sucked in by some of these stories because again, one thing that freaked me out about the Mac Miller passing. Dude, within 10 seconds, everyone knew about that. I know. It happened, it came out on the internet, and then all of a sudden, 
everyone knew at the same time. Like the in we're seconds. all so connected in seconds. We're all hooked up to like this network, and everyone's on the fucking same page. And that really freaked me out because it was like, holy shit, dude! dude I got on info travels like fucking crazy. I got on Twitter and Instagram, and everything was all just R.I.P. Mac Miller. Yes. I looked up the articles that they posted about it that actually announced his death, and they were three minutes old. Right. Exactly. Like, it was that quick. Insane. It was that quick. I wanted it's, to. Did you? Did you? I sent this to you yesterday. Did you see this by any chance? Oh yeah, yeah, I did see that. <laughs> yeah, you can. You can hit that move. You talking can, about charity. talking about make a wish. Yeah, that's. I don't. Did you watch the Drake video I sent you? Drake. I texted it to you yesterday. I don't think I did. Go back in your text and watch it right now. I don't think I did, dude. What was it about? I can't tell you. You just gotta watch it. Oh God. Well, we're gonna have to tell them at least what it's about. Yeah, we'll talk about it after you watch it. Where the fuck is it? I don't see it, dog. It was early yesterday afternoon. I don't think you did, unless you tweeted it to me. No, maybe it didn't send. I don't know. I don't think you did. All right, I'll pull it up on mine then. Bear with us. We're uh, I'm trying to figure out. One thing I want to do, I want to set up, you know how you can do like an aux like into another channel yeah. and run it off the phone. So then like if we play videos or something off the phone, then it'll feed into the podcast and be like an audio track on the podcast. Oh my God. Dude, get the fuck out of here with that shit. <laughs> Basically, Drake, it's him like at a concert, like doing his show, and they synced it up with Bring Me the Horizon, Semp Eternal, <laughs> and have him do like this big drop, it basically into a mosh pit. It's it's synced up fucking Dude, perfectly. that'd be so sick if that actually happened. It's goddamn hilarious, dude. <laughs> that is really fucking funny. Oh, fuck. What else did we have? Anything else? Um talked about architects we talked about the lucky you video we talked we briefly talked about serena williams which We're is not relevant dry. there's nothing to say anymore i know you know what i mean the only thing i liked about that was how the cartoonist like was like dude i didn't like draw this like to be racist like it's a cartoon like i made her like it's an over-the-top drawing because of like how angry she was like it wasn't really based on her race like if you take it that way whatever i guess but he didn't apologize for it which is so rare in today's world, to not just like buck under that dude, pressure. Dude, I, I, that's what I hate the most, though, is like you have to be so careful nowadays because people, will, you could put anything out and people will just draw their own conclusions. Like we were talking about with the, um, uh, what were the Kaepernick thing last week with the Nike thing, like how crazy people are to even draw. Like well, everybody make, takes everything personal. Make the connections they, they, between... Right. They warp everything to fit their narrative or, like, their insecurities or whatever it might be. Right. It's like Bill Burr always says, like, the, the joke's always funny until it's about your group of people. 100%. I made, I made fun of this group, this group, this group, and this group, and Everyone you were laughing laughed. your ass off, right. but then when I got to your group, then you were Wait, pissed. Wait, that's not true. Yeah. Fuck you. Yeah, it's, that's, people gotta lighten up. Like Pretty much how it works, dude. Pretty much how it works. But, I mean, there's... I just, I appreciated not just apologizing. Like, if you really drew that with the purest intentions, stand by it, dude. Yeah. I mean, that's rare these days. Like, and I think even the publication that published it, like, they even said, like, no, that's not how he meant it. You guys are twisting this into something crazy now. And, uh, you know, fuck you, basically, which that's, I really respected. Yeah, and that's one of the biggest problems with the internet now is because if you have an opinion about something, like, now you can connect with other people that feel the same way. So now you you get this mindset of, I'm right. Right, you basically exist in an echo chamber. Like, right. You just retweet people who agree with you. You research information that supports your agreement, or not your agreement, your point of view, and it's just, like, confirmation bias out the wazoo, my yeah. guy. Yeah, and you think all your thoughts are gospel. You really have to try hard to be an individual and, like, have your own point of view in this day and age. You really have to make a yeah. a concentrated effort to do that. Because Absolutely, Because if yeah. you're not actively trying to do that, you're going to get swept up into the just the wave of fucking people who just are going to go wherever the current takes them, I guess. That's Yeah, that's I mean, that's the way the human brain works. Like, when you get into something, you get sucked in. Facts only, my guy. Yeah. Um, Dave's working on a logo for us for the show. We got to take pictures actually to send him because he's gonna fucking edit it together. Okay, and, cool. Like make it. I don't know. I told him to do something like kind of cartoony. So hopefully we'll have that shit popping. Um, I don't know. Is there anything else that we want to say? 
Um, I think we pretty much went off. I mean, we didn't have that focus. Like, it's not the Eminem show, no pun intended, but, um, you know, we, we hit on some things. Yeah. Oh, there's another there was another person who went into his work and asked if the restaurant photo was real. Yeah, guys, we don't fucking own Danny Sheehan's. <laughs> it's not our <laughs> restaurant. Go back and look at my Instagram post. It says, guys, this is a joke. I did not buy a restaurant. <laughs> For the record, <laughs> one final time. We do not own Danny Sheehan's. Okay? That's it. It's a wrap. Yeah. We don't own <laughs> We don't own Danny Sheehan's. We did not buy Grand Chelly's house. Right. Mike didn't just graduate high school. <laughs> and I don't, we don't have a Bill's truck either. Yeah. They're just jokes. Yes. We're just fucking around. But I mean, got it kind of comes with the territory of being an asshole. I know. You know, it is what it is. Um, I saw this piece of shit car the other day. I was going to, I was, <laughs> was going to take a picture of him and be like, just, just cop the new cop foreign. Cop the new foreign. I love it. <laughs> cop the new foreign. Haters said it wouldn't be possible. I feel like the haters felt like, this podcast was going to be possible again. No, I actually, I ran into Schufelt at Wegmans the other day. Oh, really? Yeah. What did he have to say? Uh, he was like, he was like, oh, I haven't checked it out yet. He was, but he was like, I'm going to watch it when I get home today, actually. I was like, well, you should. And he's like, he's like, you guys actually going to like keep it going? I'm like, yeah. He's like, all right. Cause burning bridges would always start and then <laughs> yeah, stop. Burning bridges had about nine seasons. <laughs> yeah. It would do four weeks and then stop and then come back a year later. Yeah, and, and I was like, no, don't worry about it, because like, I actually really want to do this. Me so. too. It feels good, dude. It's it's therapeutic, and we do have to be consistent. And yeah. I don't know where this would ever go. I don't know if it can go anywhere. I don't, I it mean, could. I don't we, don't, we don't know, but we we need to keep doing it, because I feel like if we become something that people can rely on, because there's something to be said for, like, localized humor, you know yeah. what I'm saying? Like... If people who are who live where we live and are our age are gonna relate to the things that we relate to, right? And you know Absolutely, we're gonna build yeah. up a rapport with the people who hopefully hopefully continue to watch these as we put them out. And um, obviously, the more we do it, the more you guys are able to engage with us. It makes it more fun. Um, and like you know, I, I don't know how to facilitate that without just straight up asking at this point. Yeah. But you know, just. Don't be afraid to fucking ask about something or fucking if you want to contribute something, basically, is what I'm saying. Like, if there's something that you want us to talk about, if you want to bring up something that we could hit on and, like, talk about and try and make funny, like, you know, yo, you guys got to, did you see this fucking art? Whatever it might be, dude. Like, just fucking get involved, dude. Yeah. Get involved. Help make us fucking popping. Like, yeah, what are you, why are you sitting there? Hit the fucking thumbs up button. It's right there. It's yep. literally the click of a mouse. Bop. Hit that shit. Subscribe to my YouTube channel. Or if I make a new one for the podcast, whatever the case may be. Yeah. And keep tuning in because, I don't know, we're, we're going to just keep doing this, I guess. Yeah, pull up. Pull up on us. <laughs> and that's that's pretty much that. Um, if, you, if, you, if you listen, thanks. And uh, next Thursday, we'll be back. Yep. I'm wondering if we should... Think about the scheduling a little bit because I th I feel like Monday morning is a good dropping day. I agree. It's like ba you know back to work, start of the new week. Especially people who have jobs like yours. Exactly. Like they can't. Just they actually the can't. Podcast. Right. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. Perfect. And Angelo mentioned too, like we should also put out the audio version in case people like can't be on YouTube or whatever. Yeah, I agree. You know what I'm saying? Just to have it available. But again, this is a learning process. It's only the second one. <laughs> and you're you're along for the ride, so you get to see all the fuck ups. And all the bumps in the road. Yep. And hopefully as this continues, it gets more developed. There continues to be better production. We continue to hash out like what the show actually is. I feel like we're starting to, we're, we're still figuring that out. Yeah. Like today we pretty much just talked about random shit. Yeah. With no real, like there's no encompassing theme. And I don't know that there will be, but. Probably not. But... Probably not. But you know, it just, we're hashing it out. And like you're here with us for the ride. So let's make it fucking Liddy City. Yeah. Plus I got to. I'm usually not comfortable on camera and especially not doing anything like this. So it's going to take me some time to figure out how to actually do this yeah. properly. We're, we're both figuring it out. Yeah. And like you're watching it back and like hearing myself say like so many times, I hope I did a better job, but I don't know. We'll see. And um, yeah, man, fucking kick it with us, dude. Pull up. Yeah. Pull up, my guy. Let's get it. So yeah, we'll, we'll be back next week. Um, If you have suggestions for us, Hit me up. Hit him up. Yep. Whatever, dude. Like, 
Don't be shy. Like, be not shy. Be fucking bold. Yeah, because your feedback is going to be what actually transforms this podcast into into what whatever it, needs to it be. could be. Yeah, and it could be anything because the sky is the limit, my friend. So, with that said, Carson, thank you again yep. as usual. Go Bucks, and fuck. We'll see you next week because it's every week, bro. It's every week, bro. Twin Snakes out. <laughs>